Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we have more fantastic news for the digital asset market. First up, PayPal launches crypto checkout service. And what's great about this is that it's not just in the United States, it's actually being rolled out globally. And this, I think, is one of the catalysts that we need to really push things forward. So take a look at what's going on there. On top of the fact, as everything gets into the public eye, even Saturday Night Live talks about cryptocurrencies as they get into talking about non-fungible tokens, which I'm sure everybody in the audience and everybody that was watching the skit was like, I don't know what the heck that means. So we'll take a look at those two things and we'll take a look at yesterday's video real quick as I talk about an update as far as what is going on and to let everybody know that, uh, yes, I was a little bit hard on Ethereum yesterday, but just realize that Ethereum is still my second top position in my entire portfolio. So we'll take a look at those three things, but first take a look at the market. So today it is March 30th, it is 8 a.m. I am still in Puerto, we are still in Puerto Rico. Uh, I'll be here for the next uh, three, four or five days or so, and uh, should be a good time. But that does not mean that the market stops just because I am in a different part of the world. This is what's going on in our market. So first up, 1.87 trillion market cap. I think that is an all-time high. I think we've actually hit it. Correct me in the comments section, but uh, I know if we hit 1.9, definitely what it is. But uh, that is a, an amazing thing. We've had some major announcements. I mean, yesterday, Visa came out and said, hey, we're going to use uh, USDC, which is on the Ethereum network. I thought it might actually be on the Stellar network because USDC is on both, but uh, yeah, we will see if that actually happens. So there are those, there are US patents being uh, doled out, one to Theta, one to Holochain. We'll talk about that in a second. And uh, just really good essential news uh, going on around the globe. So let's see how everything looks as far as uh, the price action. So today, let me blow this up real quick. Today we've got Bitcoin at 59.1. And uh, that is close, if not the all-time high. Of course, we were in uh, this fantastic uh, one point, uh, almost $1.9 trillion market. And even a couple of days ago on Twitter, I said, I think that we're going to hit $2 trillion pretty soon. And uh, hey, we're all just, just a mere $100 billion away, so that's not too bad. Uh, Ethereum up 4% to uh, 1846 Maybe it can hit that all-time high of 2000 Binance coming 296 Tether's nobody cares. Cardano doing pretty good. Polkadot up, uh, what are we at? 0.3. Everything's up today. Uh, XRP, congratulations, XRP holders. Theta tokens down a little bit, but uh, I mean, what a magnificent run. And now it's in the top 10. Pretty good. And let's see if anything, nothing really fantastic. I mean, everything's up, which is great. I mean, that's fantastic for everybody's portfolio. But there was one that caught my eye, and I was like, wow. Well, 14% Hobie token, good job, Hobie token holders. But there is one more. This one right here, Hollow Chain. And it's up 38%, almost 39%, which is pretty darn good. I mean, uh, that's probably the winner of the day, at least in the top 100. So what's going on with Holochain? Well, just so you know, it was uh, this was on March 25th, five days ago. But still, I think uh, things get, get caught up because the news moves so fast. But Holochain was uh, granted a U.S. patent for the R and DHT networking innovations within Holochain peer-to-peer -peer network design implementation knowledge. So we can read the, whole, the you can read the whole uh, press release, I'll link at the very end, but that is exactly what's going on in the market. So again, you can't get better than that about what's going on. So let's take a look at the big story today. I thought when I woke up, actually my wife showed this to me, I thought it was pretty uh, interesting as far as what's going on. Because PayPal, uh, what was it? Months and months ago, they had already launched it for you could buy uh, different cryptocurrencies. You can buy Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, uh, Litecoin, Ethereum, and that was great because it really opened it up. Now it wasn't like you were, you know, you can buy and actually hold your keys, but they gave you the option to actually buy cryptocurrency, and that's what was one of the big catalysts. And then, not more than you know, a week, two weeks later, uh, then you had um, actually I think three or four weeks later, you had uh, Elon Musk talk about, hey, I'm going to invest 1.5 billion. So it was a big, huge step up, and this is what happened. So. Here's what we have. So PayPal started allowing US customers, consumers to use crypto to pay at millions of its online merchants globally. And that's, I think, is the big key, globally. When they first rolled this out to where you could actually purchase it, it was only in the United States. They kind of gave it a trial to see if it was actually going to work. 
they figured out that yes, this is gonna work really great, and then they uh, rolled it out uh, to everybody, and now here we are with uh, being able to pay for merchants. So this is what's happening. PayPal will announce later on Tuesday, that is today, that it has started allowing US consumers to use their crypto holdings to pay at millions of its online merchants globally. And um, you know what? What else can you ask for? I mean, you've got, I think, there is over 38, 308, I think it's actually 384 million uh, different places where you can use PayPal. And now you're going to be able to not just use it for, for fiat cash, but you're going to be able to use it for everything, which is pretty great. And I, um, I mean, if you're looking for catalysts, you can't get better than this. Here's a statement from the president and CEO, Dan Schulman. This is the first time you can seamlessly use cryptocurrencies in the same way as a credit card or a debit card inside your PayPal wallet. And going down, still while the nascent asset is gaining traction among mainstream investors, it has yet to become a widespread form of payment due in part to its continued volatility. We think it's a transitional point where cryptocurrencies moving move from being predominantly an asset class that you can buy, hold, or sell now becoming a legitimate funding source to make transactions in the real world at millions of merchants. The company will charge no transaction fees to check out with crypto and only one type of coin can be used for each purpose. So lots to unpack there. So like I said, uh, this is pretty great. And I think the big question is, is when people get into buying crypto and digital assets, especially on, on the PayPal side, I think it was just an opening and an, an ability for people just to go, wow, this is this is a great opportunity to buy uh, an asset class that is really being used more for speculation. And nobody really is using it for payments per se, unless you're Bitcoin Cash. People seem to be using that a lot more for, for uh, smaller payments around the globe than Bitcoin itself. I mean, let's just be honest. Nobody's using Bitcoin. Well, we'll say this, very few people are using Bitcoin to buy small amounts of $10 or less. And then uh, you've got Litecoin and, uh, and then Ethereum. And I don't think anybody's using Ethereum as far as uh, small transactions because it doesn't really make sense right now. So when all these things come in, the big question is gonna be is, are people gonna actually use this as far as transactions? Because a couple months ago, I mean, where were we at? We're at a, uh, about a one point, maybe $1.1 trillion market cap. And now all of a sudden we're almost at a $2 trillion market cap. So if you're somebody who has bought crypto and you're like, you know what? I don't know if I really wanna spend this on shoes or go to you know the coffee, uh, get a Starbucks coffee or to buy even, even a large purchase because from what I understand, things are gonna go up. So the question really is, is people, are people really gonna use this as a cryptocurrency and not just hold it as a speculative asset as it goes up. It'll be interesting times. Now, remember with PayPal, you are not spending cryptocurrency. It'll all be settled in cash. And uh, the, the really the big question I have is how does this work as a far as far as like if you were the, one of the first people to actually purchase, let's say you purchased Bitcoin a couple months ago and this rolled out. Okay, great. And now uh, that was at, let's say 40,000. And now Bitcoin's almost at 60,000, right? So let's say, say about $100 worth of that. It went up to $130. Not great on math. Check my math in the comment section. So now you have a capital gains part there uh, as you go up because everything gets converted instantly into fiat cash. So how does that work with um, uh, taxes? I wonder if they have something in place that will say at the end of the year, like, hey, uh, at this point, you converted this from you know Bitcoin into cash. That is a taxable event. Here's what you <laughs> actually owe in taxes. And then off you go. Again, I think it'll be a tricky situation, but that's why PayPal had to do his due diligence. And uh, they you know, did a lot of acquisitions. Like they just purchased uh, Curve not too long ago for uh, stability and, and um, uh, uh, holding the asset as far as custody. So as far as that part, we'll see what happens. It's just a, this is an interesting time. And then uh, I think the other big thing is that there's no transaction fees right now. I think they're gonna roll this out and see how this works. And I think that'll just kind of get people to go, wow, there's no transaction fees. Maybe this could be like a catalyst to go, well, if I use dollars, then there's a 2.99% plus 30 cents 
which is what when people you know come to my store or any of my online stores and, and they buy something that's how much i have to i, I get dinged on so uh we'll see <laughs> see if that actually works out anyhow that is the big story for today i think uh, again pretty big catalyst and let's see this could be a reason on top of uh, Visa and USDC, uh, why we'll probably hit a two trillion dollar market cap probably by eh, at least the end uh, early of April. We'll see. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comment section. Let's move on to our next piece. And next up, this is just a quick snippet, uh, and I'm going to link this in the in the description because I don't want to play the video. It's it's kind of goofy, but uh, Saturday Night Live, which if you're not from America, it's on you know every Saturday night around. 10 30 11 30 wherever you're at and just different skits and it's been around for you know decades and uh it's one of those those mainstream uh mainstay types of shows uh, i don't know what the what the viewership is but it really hits a lot of people and when i saw something like this and i'm pretty sure this was written by pete davidson because he's like the youngest uh member of the cast but uh he just goes over it's like a about a three minute video and he just talks about nfts and what it is it's pretty funny but again one thing is not going to get into the public consciousness. Like, however you came into crypto, yeah, probably was, you didn't just hear about it one day and go, you know what, I'm going all in. I think it's just a combination, just like sales. Like, you have to see something 7, 8, 10, 12 times before you actually start to either get it or start to invest into it. So when I see something like this, it's just one more uh, boulder coming down the hill, hitting people and going, hey, this is crypto. And then you might see another commercial from PayPal. Hey, this is crypto. Then you might see a uh, uh, something, a little ad pop up on Instagram from Visa, like, hey, this is crypto. And before you know it, it's like everywhere and people just have to uh, really get in. And that's what really leads to uh, mass adoption. So I was excited to see this. I think it's a, it's a good thing. Again, just an example of, uh, uh, people getting the information into their heads and thinking about, hey, really, what is this all about? And uh, should I be a part of that? And that is why I made this website right here, danteachescrypto.com. It is 100% free, so I can understand most of the things that they really need to understand about as far as crypto and digital assets. So they don't have to like search everywhere. They can just go right there. So if you've already been a member, great. If not, pass on to your friends and family. Anyhow, let me know what you think about uh, this as far as mass adoption. Let's move on to our last section. So yesterday, it was a great day, right? Visa came out and said, look, we're going to, uh, you're, you're going to be able to settle things uh, using the USDC stablecoin. Uh, Visa, it'll run on the Ethereum network. And that's pretty much what they said. Actually, they really did say, they didn't really say specifically the Ethereum network, but they did say they're going to use USDC. And this has been in the works for quite some time. Uh, USDC, uh, uh, the stablecoin uh, put out there by, by, by Circle, and we had um, the CEO talk about how great this is, and it is a great thing. It, it's a great thing, and I just said, look, uh, when this happens, I don't know how great this is going to be because, you know, we have, and some people had actually talked about this in the comment section, they said, look, if you're going to settle things in the Ethereum network, you're going to have to pay some pretty high transactions, and it's going to be uh, maybe a little bit of a long time. And then and that was just my thoughts about it. And then people said, well, you don't understand, Rob, that there's going to be, you know, batch transactions. They're going to do roll-ups and everything that's going to happen because this is not going to not going to happen in one day. It's not going to go from like a flip the switch. This is going to be a slow progress. I'm like, you know what? It's true. That's very true. So what is happening is uh, once they start to do these batch transactions and they can do in a layer two solution, then sure. Just like how, and I talked about this in the video, is that the final settlement, it doesn't just happen quickly on Visa for everything. Uh, it's actually takes a day or so, uh, and they do like these mass uh, batches. So could they do it on Ethereum? Sure. Is it available right now? No. And that was the whole thing um, with the, um, the new roll-ups that they're trying to get out, which was pushed back until July. So if that can happen, and they can do the roll-ups, then great. Then it's a big win for Ethereum. And I know people were talking about, Rob, you're very negative on, on Ethereum now, and you really shouldn't be. Look, let me pull this up. It is not my job to be a cheerleader for each and every crypto and go, you know what? This is going to go to the moon, and you got it. And of course, when I say stuff like that, people are like, oh, it's going to the moon. I got to invest and make some crazy whacked out price prediction and whatnot. 
On the flip side, it is also not my job to talk about super negative and like and say like this thing is going to crash and it's going to go down to the ground. I just bring out the concerns that I have in my mind and then I allow you to do your own research. So when people talk about, especially in the comments, like, you know, you're very negative, you shouldn't be negative. You should talk about Ethereum and how great it is. Look, um, I see some problems with Ethereum and that's how I see a lot of things out there. As a business owner, I've got to look to see where are my shortcomings, how I can fix those shortcomings, and how I can give my users or my base a very good um, experience with my product so they will keep coming back. So with Ethereum, yes, it's doing great things. Yes, we can use it on Uniswap. And yes, a lot of things are being built on it. However, it is very early. I think we can all agree on that. So when I talk about something negative about it, I will... Nobody gets a pass on this channel. I talk about Voyager <laughs> and people say, I use the show for Voyager. I talk about how great Voyager is and then some things come up. The waiting list, the KYC, the different fees that, that come up. And when these things happen, what do I do? I reach out to the CEO and go, Steve, you got to come on because people are, are really questioning these things and you know you got to make these things right. And what happened? Came on, talked about those things. Now, when other things come up, which there's not as many things uh, have come up uh, lately. We reach out, we see what the problem is, and then I ask if this is going to be resolved. So nobody gets a pass on this, even me. So I am happy that this actually happens to Ethereum. I'm glad this didn't actually go for it. And then just as a reminder, uh, Bitcoin is my highest holding, and then next to that is Ethereum and Cardano. And they flip around depending on the price. Right now, Ethereum is a little bit up and Cardano is a little bit down. I don't care which one makes it because I'm an investor. The emotions go out the window. I'm just here to make sure that I make the best investment for me and my family. On top of that, the emotions have to go. So if I see a problem, I go, this needs to be addressed. So Ethereum has that issue. Cardano has an issue. Cardano, and this might tick off a lot of people at Cardano, it's not really, it can't really do much right now because I mean, the smart contracts are coming, but they are not here. Who is building on it? Nobody's building on it right now because they need the smart contracts. And that was the whole point of the Gogan and the Mary uh, hard fork. So when people talk about like, you're such a Maximus for, for Cardano. Yeah, I am. Everything in my portfolio I'm Maximus for. And it's because I'm biased. And I know some people say I'm not biased. They're all biased. So. These things that I, that I talk about in my portfolio, it's because I'm biased and I want them all to work. When I see a problem, I call it out, and that's really about it. So look, that's it for today. I just wanna go over that real quick and just to, to reiterate, uh, that is what I'm trying to do here is not to be a super cheerleader and be like, it's, you know, because in 2017 when I got in, look, every YouTuber was like a super cheerleader and it's going to the moon and blah, blah, blah. And it just ticked me off because once it went this way, I got, I didn't do my own research. I didn't do the due diligence and it went up and went straight down. So on this channel, I try to be a little bit more balanced and not be a moon boy and talk about how things are gonna be awesome all the time. That's it. All right, so that's all I have for today. Um, look, if you, if you like the video, I'm sure many of you probably don't, but uh, give it a thumbs up. That always helps the channel a lot. And then also consider uh, subscribing. Uh, a lot of things we talk about are time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.